welcome, welcome, welcome back. I'm in another county and I'm headed for a conference. I had a ministerial thing I had to do this morning and I'm headed to a Willow Creek conference out of the Pastor Tim Marisol. I'm on my way and uh, I had to take care of this this morning. I got a little ways to go so while I'm driving I'm going to be sharing with my congregation. God bless your girl, my girl Alexander. Yeah, I'm going to call this Might Live. Okay, I started AI 237 in the book of Hebrews. But I'm going to start from Might Live today. And I want to look at a particular portion of scripture today to encourage you all. God bless Pastor Melanie Gleaves for my spiritual daughters. God bless you, woman of God. I want to continue to give you an aspect of the true meaning of the word faith. Right, this is something I want to show you. I attended a charismatic church for about six to seven years back in the early 80s. All right. Also read every charismatic word of faith book you can imagine. Fred Price, Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen, Kenneth Hagen Jr., you know, name it and claim it, nab it and grab it, jam it and stab it. I mean, you just name it, you know, and um, and even in the early age of about 20, 21, 22, I knew the message was a little bit it was a little bit perverted and twisted. It was not with the full balanced gospel. Now don't get me wrong, Pastor Bell. Don't get me wrong, Earl Monroe. I learned a lot from them. And I and I and I met my first five full teachers in the early 80s who really taught me the word of God. And I would never dishonor or disrespect the doorway I came through. But I am a person that reads and studies constantly. Not only the Bible, I read history, I study uh, Hebrew culture, Jewish culture, I read uh, other aspects and other ways of thinking. And I believe the Lord has given me a, a great insight into a lot of things, even early as 19 and 20 years old. And I knew there were some things I've heard that I would say, nah, that's not God. I always hear the gospel of, you don't have to go see a doctor, just claim it, you don't need a doctor. No, I said, that's not true because doctors are gifts from God and God gave them to give us insight into our bodies. And if you know, like me, we don't always eat the right food. We live an American diet. And I knew back in the early 80s that some of the stuff I heard in charismatic churches uh, is a little bit off. And uh, hello, President Crystal, CBJ. And so I had to always try to always make sure I stayed balanced. I remember back in the early 80s, you know, it was, the big thing was to look like you're rich, look like you're prosperous, you know, claim Jesus' name and name it and claim it and nab it and grab it group. And we just, dog, speak, you know, heal, rise up, you know. And, you know, a lot of times God honored our faith. It was like, it was like a bank card, like an ATM card. And uh, people were excited to have what you say, have what you say, have what you say. You know, I see people walk around claiming millions, claiming thousands, claiming cars, claiming Cadillacs, but nobody was claiming holiness, <laughs> obedience to God. Nobody was trying to find a way to find ways to get closer to God so we could really do his will, you know. And we were good for commanding sickness to die and disease to go away. And then we had the famous faith scripture, which was Hebrews 11 verse 1, and everybody can quote it by our heart because that's the scripture. A lot of people go to when they start talking about naming it and claiming it and nabbing it and grabbing it. And so they will always go to Hebrews 11 verse 1 and said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All right. And then we would take that one scripture, pull it to the side, and then use that scripture to claim houses and cars and Cadillacs, husbands and wives and girlfriends and Manipulate people. I claimed you for my husband. I claimed you for my wife. Quarter mile, you know. Continue straight onto Alcott Square. But even in my early charismatic years, when I used to hear some of these scriptures, I say, well, well, why don't we jump to 11.1? Why don't we read what happened in chapter 10 leading up to 11.1? Because I think it's the same subject matter at hand. How do we go and just take that one scripture out of its contextual setting? And then blanket it over everything. I just always wonder how you take Hebrews 11.1 1 
and make that the granddaddy. Continue straight out to Alcott Square, you know, then turn right onto US 202 North. You know, one of the one of the things I used to always, you know, used to laugh and turn chuckle. Turn right onto US 202 North Morristown Road. Chuckle my breath over was how do y'all go past ten chops of Hebrews? And then get the Hebrews 11 verse 1 and take that scripture out and then use it for commercials and use it for TV. And how do you take that one scripture, Hebrews 11 1, and then take it and try to make it fit what you want to do? Do me a favor, leave the scripture in its contextual setting and read the portion of the scriptures that come before it and after it, and you will really see how that scripture fits. And what I've seen people do, and it's just Pastor Mike, uh, President CBJ, folks that have faith in the product, you know, faith in a better tomorrow, put faith in yourself. And he's always saying, well, that's not scriptural. That's not what it says. I mean, I know it sounds nice. I know it sells products in America and in our capitalist society, but that's not how that scripture fits. It doesn't. It doesn't fit like that. You know, God says you're my wife. God says you're my husband. All right, because now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evident things not seen. You know, some people say, I don't see myself being your wife. That's because you're not supposed to see it. Because faith is not seen. And so I always say, oh, 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 wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. I said, listen, guys and girls, don't take scriptures out of its setting. Leave it where it is and read, come, read what comes before it and come after it. And then try to find out what is the author communicating. Who is the author, and what is he or she communicating feet, right onto Madisonville Road. to uh, the audience he's talking to? Who is the audience? Who is the scripture pertaining to? You know, and this is Turn how right you can really um, get out of a lot of error and really let the scripture speak for itself. And I come to find out that's been. Uh, the weakness of the charismatic movement or the word of faith movement or the nab it and grab it group you know these folks are always claim to be divinely healed by God and don't need doctors and so I'm very leery when I hear that message because I think a lot of people have died because we did not discern the Lord's body knowing that doctors and medicine and lawyers are part of the body ministry and so not to discern the Lord's body means to cut something off that you think you don't need because you're so deep in faith. Uh, error, ignorance, and another misinterpreted scripture. So when you go to Hebrews 11 verse 1, it's very important, Jose, this image for you and Pastor and President Crystal. We just got our fifth person to sow $100 seed, so it's working, continue to push. We need 25 others to sow 100, and I'm working towards holding on to my cabinet because the little bit I have, I got to make the guy hold on to my cabinet while I put my stuff out on auction. So I got to get it all. Keep believing. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be fearful. So thank you for your work. You're doing the great work, President CBJ. And Jam, thank you and all those that are watching. So when you look at Hebrews 11.1, let me read it again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And uh, President CBJ and, and Jose and many people uh, will go take the scripture out of the setting and apply it to everything from toothpaste to mouthwash <laughs> to claiming uh, uh, a movie star on television they not even have even met. And that's what happens when, of course, we don't really understand that the scriptures fit together like a puzzle. And you got to make sure uh, that the words flow in jail together to get the full meaning of that particular scripture. So if you're going to go to Hebrews 11 1 and really get the real meaning, I need to know what's going on in Hebrews in chapter mile, 10. Lee's Hill Road. If I don't know what's going on in chapter 10, I definitely can't understand chapter 11. And if I'm going to understand cha chapter 10, I better understand Hebrews chapter 9. So you can go all the way back and to tell you the truth, to really understand Hebrews, you really have to start at chapter 1, Continue verse 1, road for three miles. and study it all the way up to Hebrews chapter 11. And then in chapter 12, it looks like the subject matter doesn't change, but he begins to talk about 
seeking Christ Jesus in the kingdom and what God will do in your life as you seek after the will of God, you know? And then the subject matter kind of changed in Hebrews 13, you know? And you got to see these changes in the scripture. If not, you won't know where to change at. The Bible says dividing the word, which means you got to know exactly where to switch the change of thought at. So what we've done, we went inside of a subject matter and pulled out one particular scripture to try to to try to make it fit our denomination or what we want to make it say. When you look at Hebrews chapter 10, just back up a few verses because I got to show this to you. And, and I'm still not giving you the full justice of the chapter, but I got to start at verse 35. And it says this, Hebrews 10, 35 says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great rec recompense of reward. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Don't let it go. Don't drop the ball. Don't quit. Keep tithing. Keep giving. Keep serving your pastor. Don't jump off the journey. Why is the Hebrew writer saying this? Because many of the Jewish believers that became Christians would quit and go back to the old form of Jewish worship, back to the temple, back to keeping of the Torah, because they felt that the persecution of that time was too much for them. Although they started out well, in the beginning they were good, but now because the, pro the persecution seemed to be heavy, they didn't want to do it no more. They quit and went back to the old form of worship. Like some of y'all watching me. You started out on fire with Pastor Mike. You started out on fire with Christ. You started on fire with your pastor. But all of a sudden, after all the prophesying and after all the anointing services, you had to get up and live. And you had to deal with contradictions and persecutions and people leaving you. All of a sudden, you try to quit and go back to a normal life, which you didn't have one in the first place. You thought you did. It was abnormal. The only normalcy you had was inside of Christ Jesus. And so the Hebrew writer is encouraging the Jewish Christians, don't cast away your confidence. It has a great reward. So watch this, Ryan Stewart. God wants to reward you. God wants to honor you. God wants to bless you. And this is the type of blessing he gives you to those that keep serving Christ Jesus and operating in the kingdom no matter the contradiction and the persecution. That's the person that God rewards. Even if some folks give their lives for martyrdom, cut in half, thrown to the lions, that same faith has also shut down uh, kingdoms, quenched swords. People raised is a lifestyle in Christ and the operation of the kingdom. That is what faith is. It's not something you pluck out the sky and you use it for selling TV products. He is explaining to the, to the Jewish Christians. So you got to understand Hebrews 10 if you go on to Hebrews 11. If you really don't get the fullness of Hebrews 10, you have to know Hebrews 9. There's a whole storyline being built from Hebrews chapter 1 all the way to Hebrews chapter 10. Then you can really understand what faith is. Faith, Rodney, faith, Ryan, faith really is someone who stays locked in step inside of the ministry of Christ Jesus and refuses to go back to the old Moses order and understand by following Christ, no matter what you throw up against me, I'm sticking with Christ all the end, all the way in. I like the scripture that says, I like the song we used to sing back in the day, John Powell used to sing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to run on to see what the end's going to be. And the end going to be is not trying to make your seat in heaven. It means you got to walk in the power of heaven, although people on the earth is attacking you, leaving you, forsaking you, and you feel all alone. You got to stay committed to the whole kingdom process. And if you stick with it long enough, the Lord will reward you. The Lord will honor you. The Lord will deliver you. This is what's being taught in Hebrews chapter one, all of the Hebrews chapter 10. He says there is a great 
recompense or reward if you don't give up your confidence. So what does the devil do? He wants you to quit on your faith. He wants you to walk away from Christ. He wants you to stop tithing. He wants you to stop giving. He wants you to say this stuff about the kingdom is fake. All the preachers are fake. T.D. Jakes is wrong. Kenneth Copeland is wrong. Why the bottom is wrong? Anyone that preaches, delivers, and anointing is wrong. That's the job of a devil. He is to accuse you. He is to pervert you and twist you. He is to make you say, I no longer need church. See, that's the job of a demon, of a devil. He is teaching you and equipping you how to stay fixed on your target. And what's the target? To obey the Father God through Christ Jesus, no matter what it costs you. Because if you do that, the same seat that Jesus has today, you will sit in that seat. You'll rule the reign. You'll overcome. You'll eventually come out on the top. Faith is easy. It's not easy. I mean, the burden is light. But even when it's light, there's some problems. There's some folk who hate you. There's some folk who said all nasty things about you. You got to keep loving, forgiving, and chasing Christ. That's what faith is. Faith is staying committed to Christ Jesus in the process of this race. You don't give up. If it's a 100-yard dash, you better run it. If it's a 220, you better run it. If it's the long distance, which I believe... I'm supposed to run. In 1,000 feet, turn left. So you got you have to understand the race that God has given you. And you cannot compare your race to turn your neighbor. Left. Because everybody don't have the same type of race. Are you with me? I don't know what that was about. Oh, I can't go there. Wrong turn. Okay. Keep driving. So, so uh, I'm showing you according to the script, Yah Yah. God bless you. Thank you for being so faithful, Yah. You're my youngest tither. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, then my ponytail. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that I noticed about word of faith folk word of faith <laughs> word of faith folk and they love to talk about their level of faith right but when you look at the scripture which is so crazy man uh, the scripture really tells you that your faith is tied into your commitment to Christ and getting and getting on this church thing and don't quit on it. That is what faith really is. It isn't the accumulation of goods and services. It is one's ability to trust in Christ no matter what it costs you. That's why the Bible here says in Hebrews verse 36, for you have need of patience that after doing the will of God, you might receive the promise. Now, in 600 feet, turn right onto Glenwild Road. You were saying, well then, what is the promise? Turn Here's right the onto promise. Glenwild Road. He is going to deliver you. He is going to bring vengeance upon your enemies. He is going to vindicate you. In a quarter mile, the turn kingdom left onto Green Village Road is going to come on the scene and rescue you. And for some of you, the promise is he'll take you into heaven because you operated in the spirit of martyrdom. That was a calling. So whatever it is, it don't end up bad. It ends up good. It ends up well. It ends up the way that you was always expecting. But the, but the, but the turns and the, and the crooks and the ups and the downs is all a part of God developing you, maturing you, road. and also chastening you. He does it all together. But he says, but you have need of patience. Look what it says. For you have need of patience 
after you have done the will of God. Did you read this? After you have done the will of God. You can't be claiming promises and living in sin and practicing sin. You can't claim the promises and say, this is the way God made me. I can do what I want. No, that's not how it works. A lot of times we, we say we're waiting on God and God waiting for obedience. <laughs> I'm waiting on the Lord. No, God waiting for you to get married. Uh, God's waiting for you to get your head right. God waiting for you to stop stealing. God's wait, he waiting for you to, to submit to his will. Don't be holding God bondage to something when God said, you ain't did your part yet. God, I'll do mine. In a quarter mile, turn right on and the And guess street. what the will of God was in this particular portion of scripture? Stick with Christ Jesus. That was the will that the writer was writing to, to the Hebrew Jewish Christians. Because they were quitting. They didn't want to do God's will. They wanted to do their will. See, what we have actually done, and this is very important, we try to Americanize the Bible. And we try to make the Bible an American book. The Bible is not an American book. The Bible is an Eastern book spoken basically to an Eastern Turn culture. Right Main Street. And you got to be able to update the Bible to your own culture. So here's the updated version. Do God's will. Stop thinking, waiting on God. God waiting on you. And what is God's will? To serve Christ Jesus with all your heart, soul, and body. And we're not perfect. We sin. We got proclivities. We got weaknesses. Come on. I'm not talking about no perfect people in a sense of not making mistakes. But in terms of mature, some things you do at 40, you should be doing since you was 20. I mean, there should be some, some maturity, some matriculation. There should be some growth. He says... You will receive the promise. All right? You will receive the promise. Which I really believe it's the fullness of the kingdom. It's understanding that the kingdom is coming into full fruition. And things God want to do in your heart, in your mind. He wants you to see the fullness of the outcome. He wants you to see that Hebrews 12 chapter. I'm going to show you what that is. He said, for yet a little while, and he shall, and he shall come, and he won't tarry. For the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, his soul shall have no pleasure in him. Now, why is that scripture there? What do you mean, if my soul draws back? What is he talking about in Hebrews 10, 38? And I always say it like this, and one of my sisters, I use this word all the time, stop punking. That's what it means. Punk means you quit. Punk means you started out well with Christ. You was following Jesus. You was that Jewish man that gave your life to Christ. But then, you know, your family started forsaking you. Your people start supporting you. They start calling your names. People walk away from you. Your family says, I don't believe in that old Jesus stuff. That Jesus stuff is corny. It don't work. Oh, my God. I like these holy rollers. And all of a sudden, you join in with them. You know what? I quit too. And that's what the Bible says. Don't draw back for God have no pleasure in a person that draws back. Let me just park my car there for a few minutes. What does it mean to draw back? And keep in mind, the Hebrew letter is not written to sinners. It's written basically to Jewish Christians, Jews that believed on the Lord Jesus and began to gather in certain gathering places to become a part of the church which is the Ecclesia, which is what I call the Israel of God. They want to go back to the Israel of Moses. They want to go back to the old sacrifices, the temple. They tried Jesus. They saw the signs and wonders. They tasted of the powers to come. But then when the pressure came from the old Jewish movement, they wanted to go backwards. And so the Hebrew writer says, why are you punking? Why are you quitting? That's what he's saying. <coughs> why are you trying to go back <coughs> to an old movement? He says, and you read Hebrews chapter 1, Up to chapter, uh, boy. up to chapter nine, 
he's trying to encourage you to stick with the incoming of a kingdom that's coming to pass. It started on the day of Pentecost and it's continued to come to flow. Well, let me just go back. It started, the restoration first began as a father of the ministry, Jesus the Christ, when he showed up in the Gospels, is the kingdom has arrived. The kingdom is in your midst. I'm going to bring you to the kingdom. I'm going to do something where your temple couldn't do, your sacrifices couldn't do, and what I do, you can do, and greater work shall you do. So it started then, and then it was fully enacted at the cross. It came out the grave, and then it broke forth in Acts chapter 1, and it continued to grow as a seed from that point, and then the Jewish persecution hit, and so the letter written to the Hebrew believers was, you guys started out well. You was in the faith well. You was walking with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords well. You was connected well. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. What turned you away? Why are you running? Why are you quicken? Why are you punking? See, I give the word punk in today's version. And the Hebrew writer is trying to encourage the Jewish believers, don't turn back. Don't drop the ball. And some of you are watching me today. You started out well. You were submitted and committed to Christ. But now you're mad at God. You're bitter at God because of all the stuff you had to go through. And I'm not talking about going through to find a seat in heaven one day beyond the celestial shores. Time you confess Christ as your Savior, salvation is yours. You're seated in the heavenly places. The problem is and staying committed to Christ and seeing the kingdom manifest in your present life. That's the problem. It says, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Why is the Hebrew writer writing this in Hebrews 10 verse 39? Because he's saying is, listen, there are us out here who are committed 100%. And you let your old Jewish mamas and your daddies and your brothers and your sisters throw the rocks and stones and persecute and chase us. But we're committed all the way. And I do know when we stay committed to Christ Jesus and put faith in him in the kingdom, our soul is being changed. Our thinking is going through a kingdom process. It's so important to understand sometimes you have to go through bad times. Amen, yah, yah. And that's what's going on. Hold on to the faith in Christ Jesus in bad times so that your good times will come. You're going to have to do what you have to do so one day you get to do what you want to do. What a powerful uh, principle in the kingdom. And so this principle is being taught. Now hold on. I can't get the Hebrews 11 verse 1 until I really tap on Hebrews 10. I'm backing up spirit slowly so you know what I'm saying is so powerful. Back up to Hebrews 10. And here's a scripture that we've that we used in church. Hebrews 10 25 have been used by church folks to tell folks to come to church on Sunday. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Hebrews 10 25 People use that to tell you you need to stay in church. Okay, now let me give you the two-sided coin to in that a teaching. Mile, turn left onto North Passaic Avenue. It's two sides to this message. Two sides. All right. First of all, verse 25, hold on, does not directly connect to the Sunday morning model that we have created in our churches in America. Hold on, don't throw your stones because I'm not giving you an excuse to quit your local church. I'm just showing you, keep the scripture in its proper setting, okay? Hebrews 10, 25 says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. 
what is the Hebrew writer saying? What is this apostle trying? What is this? What is this? This apostle Paul trying to communicate to the saints here, the Jews that became Christians. And let me give you the history. This is very important. I teach this at SITU, but I feel like to teach this real quick. This Hebrew writer is dealing with a present Jewish persecution on this thing called the church. Now, in the first century, during this time, church services were not Turn one day the out the week. Avenue. Let me say it again. Church was not one day out the week. Now, this is shocking for some of y'all. All right. Church was was not one day out the week. Church was every day. Please write that down. I need y'all to write that down. Please write it down. Please, please, please write it down. When he's writing to this scripture, he's not talking about once a week church services. In the early church, since the book of Acts, they held the gathering of saints inside of temples, inside of homes. There was no such thing as a local church building on a corner where you met every Sunday at 11 o'clock service at 9.30 Sunday school. That's the model we morphed it into as Americans. And I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just giving you the history lesson so you know how to teach Hebrews. Now, I'm, I'm teaching you something that you most likely won't even hear on your Sunday morning service because all we do is listen to sermons and people hoop and holler, and we don't go back and really do the full historical study on how some of the stuff we do in our American culture churches has nothing to do with what's going on here in the book of Hebrews. So when the writer is saying, do not forsake the assembly of yourselves, he is saying, listen to you, Listen to me, you Jewish Christians. We are the church. You got that right, yeah, yeah. And I need you guys and girls to continue to gather together in homes and in different temples every day. Don't quit as some started doing because of the persecution of the old Jewish movement. That is what he's talking about. He is not referring to to the American church service on Sunday mornings. <laughs> now, let me give you the other side of the coin. The reason why this same scripture can be used for that because in our cultural society of this 21st century, we turned this model of church service into what we want to make it. So we reduced it down to once out of a week. And could you believe that folks can't stay committed one day out the week? So even though this scripture is not directly connected to that, we can use this scripture to encourage people to stay connected to your local church. Because there's some services that might not meet on weekends. They might we, they might have church service on a Thursday night inside of a Burger King. And so the pastor and his 20 folks meet every Thursday night at Burger King for a burger and fries. And he shares the gospel and he runs his church directly out of Burger King. He's not interested in the building. He's not interested in buying the building. What he want to do is have a place where the saints gather so he can equip and train the saints. And that church at Burger King is just as important as the mega church on the corner with 10,000 members. See, that's the problem I have with our type of Christianity. Because we have reduced it and deduced it to something that had nothing to do with the type of Christianity that was birthed in the book of Acts. Hang with me. Because I'm still dealing with Hebrews 11 verse 1. Because you can't understand Hebrews 11 if you don't understand Hebrews 10. Hello, Keisha. So when you're about to join a church, don't join the building. Find out who the leader is in the leadership and what are their training. And then you join that group. In a quarter mile. Because wherever that senior elder go with the leadership staff, 
That's who you follow. Don't follow the choir. Don't follow the deacon board. Don't follow the trustee board. Find out who is the five-fold leader, who is the angel of the house, and check out his leadership and find out is it and it, is it teaching the right thing that you can join yourself to so you can learn how to work ministry and there you pay your tithes and your offerings. Some places meet Sundays, some places gather on Saturdays, some places gather on Monday nights, some places gather on the football field. See, the church is universal. It's a people. It's not really a building. So when he speaks about gathering, he says, you got to continue to gather. You got to huddle up. There's a thing we used to do in football, Keisha, called huddle up. And the guys would get in the circle. That's what church means. It's the, it's the corporate people huddling up. And the leadership train and equips the people. Are you with me so far? So what happened was there were Jews that became Christians that began to say, oh, I'm not gathering with y'all no more. Because the last time I gathered, when I came home, my Jewish mother kicked us out. My Jewish dad kicked me out of the temple. I, I, I can't, I'm not even, I'm, I'm not even a part of the Jewish Federation anymore. Now, they took my Jewish ATM car. Oh my, so they start losing their Jewish benefits. They're being persecuted. And what the Hebrew writer said, hey, you off this. In a mile, <coughs> continue on to Walnut Street. Hold on. You ought to shout and dance because of the spoiling of your goods. The word spoil means... Continue on to Walnut Street, then turn right onto Winston Drive. Means the taking away of something. <coughs> Hold on. I gotta get something to drink. My throat is dry. So, stick with me. So what happens is, which is so important. Six hundred feet. Turn left onto Goodhart Drive. The turn left onto Goodhart Drive. The Jewish believers were being discouraged because of the mass persecution. Uh, not a In a quarter feet. mile, turn left onto Coventry Road. What, he's, what they're teaching is this, is that you cannot use as an excuse to quit your gathering based on the persecution of the Jews. You have to be able to stand the test of time and say to yourself, I don't care what comes hell or high waters, Turn left, I, I am committed to my local church where it gathers. Now if it gathers inside of a church building on Sunday mornings, I gotta be there. If it gathers at Burger King, I gotta be there. Wherever my local leader and my church is, if it gathers on Facebook, I gotta be there. So wherever it gathers, I gotta be at that gathering and I cannot quit on the gathering based on the persecution that come from my old Jewish friends. That is exactly what the Hebrew writer is communicating to first century Christianity. I got to I got to make it so plain for church folk. And I understand pastors and leaders like to use this verse to say be the church every Sunday, which you should. But I got to give it to you in the proper balance so you understand that and what we do in the church circle is this. Turn right onto West Hobart Gap Road. We make folks feel guilty because, and I'm just talking about in general, I've been around pastors. You have a church on Sunday. Your building's paid off. All right. Your church been existing over 50 years. 
and the people paid with their sweat, blood, and tears, paid the building off. And so you call yourself the real church because your building's paid off. And so folks that come to your building is a real church. But Miss Livingston, who's in her living room, who got 20 people and she's preaching, somehow in our arrogant thinking, we swear that her church is not a real church because she's not in a stained glass window building like you are. Not knowing that the kingdom might be in that place, it might not, it might not be in yours. Are you with me so far? I'm showing you these things in because mile, turn left onto South Livingston Avenue. if I don't teach this, you're going to miss the whole meaning of Hebrews 11 verse 1. Because all this goes together. And if you don't understand this, you would think faith is nabbing and grabbing stuff. But real faith is, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I need and I need to stay committed. Turn left onto South Livingston Avenue to where the church gathers at. Uh, so that I will be able to stay committed to my faith. See? Faith really is your walk and your commitment to Christ Jesus. No matter what it costs you. See, that's what faith really is. It says you can throw your rocks, you can talk about me like a dog, you can talk about me and be mean and nasty, but I want to let you know something. I'm not quitting. I'm in for the long haul. I'm submitted and committed yeah, all the way. Take a U -turn in South Orange Avenue, and wherever, watch this, wherever my church gathers, wherever my leader is, I'm following my leader. That's the real church. It is not the bricks and mortar. When he speaks about do not forsake the gathering of the saints, a in South you got to find Route out where is... Avenue, Route 510. Where is the official gathering of saints? Where is the anointing setting aside and gathering of the saints? And wherever my leader and church gathers at, I need to be in that circle. That is exactly what the Hebrew writer is communicating in Hebrews 10. Hello, Keisha. Hello, Minister DJ. So here is what you should do. Before you join a church choir or a church building, or because this church is the closest one to my house. I, I... So, so this is important to understand this. You have to find out who is the head of that ministry and what does he or she teach that I may join the coattail of that leader. Like Joshua joined Moses and Timothy joined Apostle Paul and Elisha joined Elijah and Joshua joined Moses. See, you got to find the person <clears throat> and where they're going and see if they are appointed by God and do they got a track record and are they producing kingdom ministry and then you join that person and you'll find a gathering with them that are appointed by God. This is very important about joining local churches. That's why some church you have to date for a season to see if that leadership is worthy of your commitment. Because once you make that commitment, you are to gather every time they gather. Are you with me so far? I'm showing you this. And this may be more, this may be something you've never heard before. But I'm tying it back to the Hebrew scripture. And the Hebrew scripture simply teaches you that wherever the leadership gathers, you ought to be at that gathering. And some churches gather on Sunday, some churches gather on Tuesday nights, some churches never get a building, they gather at restaurants, they gather at ball games. I think churches could be formed in every base. I got people who follow around baseball teams. I think you put together baseball team ministries where 12, 20, 25, 30 of you hold church services and, and the seven inning stretch, hold it after the game, and you just travel around the world and hold baseball service, church services. I just think we have restricted people to Sunday morning cement block church service. That's just an American model. 
The Bible is wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's freedom. Creativity. Don't make me feel bad because I don't have a church building. Don't do that. Wherever the spirit of God is gathered, it could be any place. As long as the ministry, watch this. As long as the ministry, watch this, is anointed by God and also appointed by a proper group of appointed men. Very important. Watch the balance I'm doing. Because I don't like these self-appointed folk. There should be a group of ministers who set you aside that confirms your calling, which is very important. Because some folks get up and say, I'm called to be apostle. And they just start ministry. That's not how it works. There's an anointing from God and there's an appointing by man. And it, and, it, and, it, and it merges together and you follow the proper protocol. Don't ever join a ministry if that person will have a track record or you really uh, don't see the presence of the anointing of God in that area. That's, that's very important when it comes to the things of the kingdom. very important to understand that now if you don't understand that you're going to confuse church services with bricks and mortar all right you have to understand that church services are based on the gathering of people the leader and the gathering of people how do i know because hebrew 10 says do not forsake the assembling of yourselves. This is Hebrews 10, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as has become the custom of some, but exalting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now, when you see the day approaching, folks took this scripture and moved it 2,000 years in the future about the second coming of Christ and the earth going to end and blow up and we're going to be raptured out of here. That is not what he's talking about. The day approaching means that there's a day coming in 70 AD when the mosaic, when the temple of Harab, the temple on top of the mountain is going to be destroyed by fire and that's going to be the shutting down or the official completion of the shutdown of the old way of coming to God. And the only thing that is left is the invisible kingdom through Christ Jesus handled and led by the church the ecclesia the israel of god stay with me to me pastor marcus god bless keep up the good work son i see what you're doing man all right i see what you are doing i see what you're doing i'm going to have a donation i'm going to sponsor a kid i am going to sponsor one okay so hold on i didn't forget you son i gave a commitment of a 70 dollars seed i will sow that commitment i'm just almost almost out this hole all right just keep praying for pastor mike He's trying to save my stuff before I lose all my videotapes and DVDs and CDs. I got to stay focused. Keep praying for me, Pastor Marcus. I'm proud of you. I see what you're doing, man. Two bus loads are going this Saturday. God is good. So, so, so my question is, where's my leader at? Where's my team at? And wherever they gather, I want to gather with them. See, the church is gathering at Greater Ventures this Saturday I passed the Marcus Demons two bus rides of kids. The church is going down the parkway, headed to Great Adventures. Fun games. But I guarantee, Pastor Marcus, that there's gonna be some sharing of the gospel, whether it's a prayer, whether you're gonna see a light shine. Uh this is not, boy, this thing takes me all these dumb places. It's not even scripture. I'm going my way. Um, you're going to see that this is the type of kingdom that God is building in this hour where Christ shows up in the strangest places and the anointing will fall on bus rides. Anointing falls at Great Adventure. Wherever the church gathers, there, there is where I want to be. Okay? The problem, Pastor, my just FYI, I only need five students sponsored and I will be planting the seed I place that I got you, son. Now, you ain't got even, you ain't got to even say that to me, man. I, I already know, son. I already know, man. Don't don't you get discouraged. 
Don't, don't you, I'm so proud of you. You stuck with it and God supplied your need, man. And I'm proud of you, man. I'm so, God, man, proud of you. And I watch you grow, man. You, you're really coming to your own, man. And I, I give honor what honor is due, man. You're doing your thing, Pastor Marcus. You're doing your thing, man. I'm proud of you. I would curse, but I'll lose audience. But I'm heaven proud of you. <laughs> ah, God, I'm just so happy when I see people doing what they're supposed to do. Let me turn around. Yeah, I got the wrong turn. These applications take you all down these other streets and places. Really, sometimes it's a waste of time. Anyway, you're listening to Mike Live, and I am teaching about what faith really is and what faith isn't. I'm giving you the balanced message to what faith is. And uh, so the church, the Ecclesia, is going to Great Adventures this Saturday. And Pastor Marcus is leading two busloads of members of our churches down the parkway to Great Adventures. And I'm already speaking health, protection, no bad rides, roller coasters are tight, fun, relaxation. The food is blessed, the fellowship is blessed. And I also anoint Reverend Marcus to share a word with these kids out there that the gospel of the kingdom could be preached. Thank you, Jesus. Stick with me. Thank you, Jesus. So watch this, Stephanie. Watch this, Pastor Marcus. So when Hebrew says, do not forsake the assembly of yourselves, I mean, wherever you see appointed and divine leadership and groups gathering, if you're the body of Christ, you should get inside that gathering and find out how can I support, how can I stay connected to the move of God. That is what I believe when the scripture talks about the gathering of the church. Are you with me so far? So part of what I'm teaching this, why I'm teaching this is because I want to deliver people from the condemnation that some church leaders put on other ministries because they don't have buildings like you have buildings or they don't have all this, all the stuff that you have. And you try to make people feel bad because they don't close their church and join yours. So I honor those house churches. I honor those storefront churches. I honor those gatherings who meet in restaurants and cookouts and backyards. I honor those places where 12 of y'all get together under divine leadership and you uh, are doing what God called you to do and you're not quitting because someone else don't come and someone don't support you. You're staying fixed on your target. I honor those because the Bible speaks of these people who will not forsake the assembling of yourselves. Now watch this. Verse 26 is a strange portion of scripture because 26 says this because it finds itself after 25 and look at this strange verse of scripture Pastor Marcus and Yahya and Jocelyn Wade God bless you woman of God it says for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth there remain no sacrifice for sins now, when I read this a long time ago, folks trying to make this fornication, homosexuality, you know. But you know what he's talking about? He's talking about people that have been enlightened with the power of Christ Jesus, saw Christ move, seen the gifts of the Spirit, saw the dead raised, watched lives be changed. You're following Jesus, but all of a sudden, you're tired of the persecution. So you quit the church, you reject Christ, and you go back to the old Moses movement. And look what God says about these individuals. You're about to see a certain type of judgment and a fiery indignation which will devour your adversaries. Now, I'm going to say something here. And I need you to hold on to your seat. This is scary, but this is the truth. This scripture in verse 27 is confirming what Jesus said, not one brick will be left on top of another. Fire, 
hit the Jewish temple in 70 AD and burnt up those Jews, watch this, who did not take heed to the, to the prophetic word of Christ, who warned the Jewish leadership, when you see the Gentile nation, Rome, surrounding the city, surrounding the temple, forget what you got, drop your bags and run for the hills. Run, Forrest, run. And if you're there with someone in the field, one leaves, the other gonna stay. Leave your drop all and run because it's a time of fiery judgment. It's the time of desolation. God is gonna repay his enemies. He is going to allow the Roman Empire, Empire to tear the temple down and burn the city practically to the ground. You gotta leave the city because it's time for judgment. And did you know, listen to me church, did you know that over one million Jews died in this judgment? This scripture to me tells me that there were many Jews who started out with Christ Jesus and the church gatherings, the Israel of God, and then decided to quit and say, I'm not doing this no more. And left. And said, I'm going back to my old Jewish roots. And they were, and he said, you go back to that old Jewish temple, you're going to be caught up in the fire of judgment. So you willfully quit. You willfully went backwards and said, I'm not doing this anymore. And he speaks against it. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Now I've arrived to my location. I taught you for over an hour. This is a powerful word. Let me tell you right now. Go back and watch this again and again and again. And when I come back, I'll do part two later to this message about what's the real meaning of faith and what faith isn't. It is a commitment to the race with Christ. It is not letting something go because of the pain that's pertained to it. I met many believers who served Christ and lost family members. People quit. They lost their marriage. They lost their job. People walked out on them. And Christ said, you still don't have a right to quit. Stick with it. Stick with it. Yeah, you can throw everything at me you want. I'm not going any place. I'm sticking with it. You can tell me I'm crazy, I'm wrong. I, I'm sticking with Christ in the kingdom because I know at the end of the day, it's going to flip out just right. Lord God, I pray this morning for my five individuals who sold a $100 seed, first of all. And for those who obey the kingdom of God, Lord God, let their seed germinate and let it produce in the master's name of Jesus. I speak as a prophet of God. Let that seed germinate and produce it for my five people. ANS an unnamed person, a person named Jam, Pastor Sharon, and a brother named Brother S. Those five gave a $100 seed, 25 more to go. Who can jump in? So more than one seed. Let's go for 25 more. 25 sold $100. And some of you who can't sell the 100, you made a commitment to sell my birthday gift, So what you can. Some can sell 20, some can sell 10. I pray for the second group, no matter what you sow, is accepted in faith. But I'm in, a, but I'm in agreement, there's 25 that can sow $100, because I'm gonna close out these cabinets and get my center open. And by the week after next, I'm gonna leave in God for this. Who can help me? Step into this circle. Gotta go to this, uh, this prayer thing I'm going to. God bless you, I love you. Love you, Pastor Marcus. Keep on, keep up the good work. God bless you, Jose.